everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. Don't you think about Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks. I'm Lori LeBay, your host, and I'm thrilled that you are here to join us today. We're going to have a really interesting conversation talking about uh, maybe finding some cash you didn't know was hanging around. And uh, before I introduce you to our guests, I'm just going to give a couple of shout outs. One is to Twiddle. Twiddle has uh, a couple of different products. One is a sensory product, and it's just wonderful if you're dealing with sundowning, if you're trying to reduce stress for those you care for living with dementia, and it also helps family and staff as well, and it just makes things more peaceful all around. They also have a dressing product called adapt wrap which reduces combative behaviors. You know, when you're trying to put something over the head, they don't understand all the time what it is you're doing and why you're moving their body in these contorted fashions. And so check out Twiddle and um, you can just go to their website for twiddles, plural.com and check out the adaptive wrap. It's just a a really nice uh, simplified way to make the the dressing process a little bit easier and then check out their twiddle tools that can be used too they are they're very cute very comfortable and will keep people occupied and feeling happy for a long time i also want to do a shout out to lorenzo's youth summit that is coming up june 14th and 15th and that is going to be a, a great time it's free You can just go to lorenzoshouse.org for more information. And then I'm always big on support groups. So I do have one here that meets in person in Shoreview, Minnesota at the Community Center the last Wednesday of the month from 10 a.m. to 1130. Anybody who is dealing with dementia is welcome. We also provide respite uh, for those living with dementia, just reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. I can get you information on that. Or I have an online program called Arthur's Memory Cafe, which meets twice a month on the second and fourth Wednesday from 1 to 3 p.m. That's central time. Again, reach out to me. I can get you the Zoom link. We have people all around the world participating in that. And then a big shout out to Dementia Map. Dementia Map is a global resource directory, which is free to use, as well as checking out alzheimerspeaks.com, where we have all kinds of free educational tools that you can download there as well. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and introduce you to our guest today. Well, Joyce, I'm excited to have you on the show today. I think your topic is uh, really important for people to be aware of. And uh, before we dive into our line of questions, um, do you mind introducing yourself to our to our um, audience here? Absolutely. Thank you, Lori, for inviting me here today. My name is Joyce Bidwell, and I'm greeting you from New Mexico, the land of enchantment. Uh, I, I'm from Albuquerque, and what I do is... Um, I help seniors with a life insurance settlement. But, uh, and the reason how I got into this field was because I I started out with a, a mother who had dementia and that's how I met Lori uh, with Dementia Map. Okay, wonderful. Well, today we're gonna be talking about discovering that cash that you might've overlooked. And I, and especially when a chronic illness hits, I mean, you just, ne- you, you wanna know, everything that you have accessible to you. So I think this is a, a very important topic. Now you had mentioned that your your mom had dementia. How long did she live with dementia? 
Well, I was lucky. I mean, she was 96 when she passed, and she had us had it slowly uh, for about five years, uh, last five years of her life. It didn't really come out until the last two years, and it really progressed. And it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was very difficult. I was very stressed. I had I had anxiety. My primary care doctor said, "You better settle down because." Many times the caregiver had, uh, goes sometimes before the, the parent. So I said, okay, I'll, I will. Luckily, my son was living with me and he was able to do most of the heavy caregiving. I, I, at the time I was employed and I, I had to continue working, but she was difficult. She was very combative and um, we had to deal with it. I have a funny story to tell if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, she wouldn't go to sleep at night and we just we had to get some sleep and uh, we just couldn't stay up and she would just sit there in a chair and we just couldn't get her to go to her to her room so we tried everything thing my son said let me try this so he put on um a tune by led zeppelin and she ran into her room and that was the end <laughs> he closed the door <laughs> and he turned up the volume i said wow that really worked but um yeah she she progressed rapidly and she passed when she was 96 but i had her for a long time before and i enjoyed my last years with my mother before that time came and we had a good time and i miss her right now hard to replace her. the mom that's for sure it sure is yeah well let's talk about the life settlement business you know a lot of us have life insurance but i don't think we all know exactly how it can be leveraged Right. It's, it's a, it has a real interesting history. And I always like to start out with the history because it's different. And I love to tell people about it because so many people will say to me initially, what is this? Is this something new? Is it a gimmick? Is it a scam? Is it legal? And I said, yes, it's, it's legal, but it's not any of the other things that you mentioned. Let me tell you how legal it is. In 1911, the Supreme Court of the United States of America deemed that a life insurance policy was an asset that could be sold, just like a car, a house, anything that you have. And that was that decision was made by a very popular, famous justice. His name was Oliver Wendell Holmes. He's been written up. He's been quoted many, many times. He was sort of a uh, a very interesting character on the Supreme Court. So I always love to tell people that. And um, then I say, nothing happened in the industry until the 1980s. The 1980s came, late 1980s came, and we had an epidemic of AIDS and HIV. Well, the insurance industry got together and decided to help the people afflicted with this disease and say, tell them that if they had a life insurance policy, they would be able to sell it and get their death benefit while they were still alive to help them with their very expensive treatments that they needed to go through. Uh, and it helped quite a few of them out. At the same time, the medical industry put together a, a cocktail to help them. And that cocktail took the word terminal out of AIDS and HIV and made it a chronic disease rather than a terminal illness. And pretty much it has wiped out the, um, out the disease. I mean, I st it's still out there. People can get HIV, but it's nothing like it was back in the eighties. And um, a basketball player, Magic Johnson, he was diagnosed with HIV back in the late 80s. And if I, if I recall, he's still uh, very active right now. So his life was extended quite a bit by the cocktail. But financially, the life insurance um, that they were able to sell was called a viatical at the time. And it still exists. I still do viaticals. We do them uh, for anybody who has a terminal illness. And uh, that viatical really helped financially those who were suffering with the disease and their family, of course. So the viatical is a 
program the insurance uh, industry developed to give anyone who had a serious illness that was diagnosed with less than three years of life uh, to sell a life insurance policy. And really at a very high rate too. If they, say the policy is $100,000, they could sell it for let's say $80,000. And it's, it's, it's still out there and uh, in existence. But after the, uh, after the AIDS and HIV, uh, what do you want to call it? A uh, epidemic died down. The life insurance industry decided to give something similar to seniors over the age of 65 to be able to sell their life insurance policy to help with long-term care. It's not even, it, they don't have to do it for a long-term care. It could be for anything they wanna use it for. It's just a buy-sell transaction available to anyone over 65 who had a policy over a hundred thousand. And that's what I do. And I help a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. Uh, they, if they decided they just want to sell the life insurance policy and buy their RV that they've always wanted to buy, they could do whatever they want with the, with the money. But it's there mainly to help seniors as they age uh, for any purpose they, they decide to use it for. And so that's what a life insurance policy is. It's legal, very legal. And um, that's all I do. That's my specialty. I'm a senior myself. And I'm proud to say I'm 80 years old. Uh, I, I enjoy that. <laughs> I didn't like it at first. <laughs> it was hard for me to even think about 80. But now, as you know, I, I think it's great to say I'm 80. So I, I use that. It does help people realize that, well, I'm just not some person out there trying to sell something. I'm not trying to sell. I'm trying to educate people to, that they have an opportunity to that exists for them. And many times, they don't know about it. I would say 85% of the people I talk to have never heard of a life insurance policy or a settlement that they could sell. And many times what they do is they let it lapse and they get nothing, or they get what's called a surrender value, which is peanuts compared to what they can get on the secondary market. And, um, you know, many times um, there are different reasons why they're selling their policy. For instance, um, um, inflation, many of many seniors are on a fixed income and it's taken a big bite out of their fixed income. Um, we've all seen the food prices, but a bit, one of the prices that really got to me was the increase in my car insurance. Wow, 35%. And that's a, and that has nothing to do with your age or anything else. I even called up my insurance company and they said, nope, uh, nothing you can do. It went. Everybody, every state has received an increase in their life insurance, um, um, not life insurance, car insurance recently. A lot of it has to do with um, parts being so expensive to get uh, if your car breaks down and needs um, repair. Those prices have gone up and that has made the insurance prices go up as well. And, you know, there's just a lot of different reasons uh, people will sell their life insurance and it could help them. It, it could not only help them, but it helps their family. It helps everybody involved. It's a win-win-win for everybody. Now, I know you you had mentioned about the, the uh, is it vatical or? Viatical. Viatical. I, I still am not understanding the difference of that versus, you know, I mean, there's some life insurance where you can take a loan out against them. And then there's others that it's just, a, you know, stays with you until a certain age. And then they kind of, some of them go kaboom. And if you live too long, you outlive your policy of what you paid in. There are many types. Um, yeah. So can you kind of break those all down for us? Um, the viatical and the life, in, life yeah. settlement. Yeah. Uh, the viatical is simple. It's for people who are suffering from a serious illness of which their life expectancy is less than three years. They need to get have a diagnosis from a doctor. I'll give you an example. Last year, I had a telephone call from a young man uh, from Louisiana who was, have, who was diagnosed with stage four liver cancer. 
and he had $350,000 worth of life insurance on two different policies. He has said that he had already been to another life insurance settlement company and wanted a second, get a second uh, order or offer. So I said, I'll see what I can do. Well, because of his life expectancy, he's 47 years old. He had a thriving real estate business in Shreveport, Louisiana. And everybody wanted to buy those policies because of his life expectancy was less was like six months. So he was able to get an offer of 70% of the face amount. The face amount was 350 combined. So 70% was quite a bit of uh, upfront uh, cash. He said he wanted to travel uh, and enjoy his remaining days, whatever. But uh, because we knew the other uh, life settlement company and we have kind of an unwritten law, we not, we're not going to try to outbid another one. We, we said, unless we can get him more than the other, um, we, we, we would just bow out and just let the other company go with it. It's just something that you do in the industry. You honor each other. But um, he, um, yeah, that was a hard one for me to do. <laughs> he sounded wonderful on the phone, robust, beautiful young voice. I checked out his website and I, I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> so uh, those things happen. And that was a bona fide viatical. Okay. Uh, he didn't have to be 65. It didn't even have to, the, the amount didn't have to be a hundred thousand. It could have been 25,000. It could have been 50,000 on the policy. Didn't matter. It, it was the, the seriousness of his illness and uh, that we wanted to rectify and help him as much as possible. So that's a viatical. Now, a life insurance settlement that the uh, insurance companies decided to do after they were so successful with the uh, the HIV and AIDS with the viatical. It's a different it's a different program. Similar, uh, the applicant has to be sixty five or older and has to have a, a policy of a hundred thousand or more. But I've done a couple for a little less, not necessarily a hundred. So never say never. There's always an exception to the rule, right? But um, those are basically the rules. There, nothing is needed. It's not like a mortgage with all these different uh, applications and verifications that you need to sign. It's a simple application. We take over the phone. We only require two signatures from the policy holder. Uh, they need to give us permission and a signature to look at their medical records and also to look at their policy. If they have the policy to submit, it, that would even be better. But we do need to have uh, their signature to look at the policy and analyze it. And those are the only two things that we do. It takes about six to eight weeks to get an offer. And it doesn't cost a penny to find out that what your policy is worth on the secondary market. There's no out-of-pocket um, cost for an appraisal on the policy or the medical records. There's none of that. And so I always say to people, you owe it to yourself if you have a policy to find out what it's worth. So they um, many times will, you know, think about it. And then uh, if they're interested, I'll hear from them. We just try to let everybody know that what we do is we act as a fiduciary to the policy holder. Our first responsibility is with the policy holder, not the buyer or anybody else or the advisor. It's the policy holder, and try to get him the best offer we possibly can. Uh, we are all licensed and uh, the company is licensed in all the states, the company I represent, uh, in all the states. Not every state though, I can't say every, but all the states, uh, 48 states, <laughs> we're still a little bit uh, shy on Alaska up there. We have to work hard to get that one. But uh, many, many life insurance settlements are, are only licensed in a few states, but we have all 48 states. We've been doing this since 1993. We have a very large network pool of buyers. And because we do, we are able to get 
two, maybe three offers sometimes. We'll submit an application. After we process the application, we submit it. We sort of, what they say, shotgun it out to all our, our buyers and see what happens. And many times we'll get two or three uh, offers and the policyholder, the seller, can decide which one he prefers. Or obviously, the, the one that he gets the most with. But um, uh, it's, it's an interesting process. Uh, it's all done by telephone and then uh, FedEx and sign the documents. When the documents are signed, um, the monies go into an escrow account and there's a 15 day right of rescission. In other words, the seller has two weeks to decide, I don't want to do this or change their mind, that sort of thing. And at the end of the 15 days, the money is deposited into his into his account, whichever account he decides to go with. And we've never had a problem. We've been doing it for uh, 30 years now, and we've done maybe 25,000 of these along the way. It's, it's become very popular. Uh, and now it's becoming even more popular because of the baby boomers are now in their 70s. And um, they might decide, you know, we don't need this anymore. It's just sitting in the drawer. The children are grown up. Maybe we should, or uh, they should do something else with it, or perhaps they have health problems. And there are many statistics about what they're expecting for long-term care with the baby boomers. And it's it's going to be unbelievable. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I just have one statistic right here that, um, where is it? Long-term care. They predict... Uh, quite a bit. I, I don't have that statistic in front of me. Uh, it is, let's see, 58% uh, estimated percentage of women 65 or older who will need long-term care during their lifetime. That's a lot. 47% for 65 men or older. And um, so I'm, I think that number has even gone up. So, you know, long-term care is something that um, they are preparing for right now. And uh, so people need to think about that. And this this helps. This is not a, it doesn't cover everything, but it does help. If they do have a life insurance policy, they could sell it and it could make things better for them in their uh, retirement years. We did a survey last year on Facebook and we asked one question. Uh, what concerns you most now that you're retired going forward? Number one, being diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's or outliving your retirement money. And 68% of the people chose outliving their retirement money or funds or whatever you want to call it. Um, I had, here's, here's a story, personal story, my mother-in-law and her husband saved diligently for the retirement. He passed away at 80, uh, 82, she was 80. She had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's when she was 70 and lived to three months shy of 100. When he passed at 82, she went into assisted living at, the, at 80. And so she was in assisted living for almost 20 years. It got to be very expensive. And what happened was their retirement funds were depleted, were, were going down rapidly. And her son, my former husband, uh, he was very smart with money. And so he made some adjustments and he was able to get her into uh, assisted living that was less expensive. And um, she, she made it to almost 100 and she passed away peacefully in her sleep but it was very expensive and all the monies that they had were, were gone. It, it didn't take long. I don't know if you've had any experience with assisted living and the cost of it now, it's, it's very expensive. So I always try to tell people that this could help. It's not, a, it's, it, it, it's not for assisted living, but it, it could help depending upon the situation and the size of the policy, et cetera. I have a couple of case studies here that are very interesting. Uh, I could even go over those, but uh, I did want to mention a term policy. 
uh, a term policy is for a term, 30 years is usually the highest it'll, it'll go. It's usually 20, 25, 30. And there's usually a conversion feature on a term policy. If many times they forget about the conversion feature and at the end of the term, if they did not exercise the conversion feature, the policy is gone, it's finished, okay? It becomes a, a pumpkin as I call it. However, if they do have a policy as a convertible feature, conversion feature, and they try to sell it during that conversion feature, they could get a lot of money for it. They're not gonna get a penny from the insurance company, but, and they should never let it lapse. So it's, it's an opportunity for them. And I have one example right here. Let me read that to you. Male 69 with a $2 million Transamerica term policy and a life expectancy of 190 months. That figured that out to be 16 years. Um, the policy owner received $31,147. What makes this case interesting is that although $31,147 is only 1.5% of the face amount, the client was thrilled to get the cash as opposed to letting the policy lapse and getting zero. And there's no cash value on term policies either. So that, that was a great, uh, and I had, we, there was another one, uh, veterinarian. He had two policies. They came to $3 million. They both were term policies. And uh, he knew about the conversion feature and he exercised it. And he was able to get $350,000 on his two policies that were worth two, 2 million combined and would have got nothing if he didn't do anything to it. And the reason he did get the 350 is because he had a health issue. But he was still working as a as a veterinarian, but he had some type of health problem. And uh, so those are wonderful stories. I love, I have a whole bunch of them. And I'm happy to send those out to anybody who requests information. And um, I have a wealth of information available and would love the opportunity to answer any questions and help anybody who has any kind of inquiry to a life insurance settlement because it is a wonderful opportunity. It's a, we say it's an option, it's a financial option. And I like this statement right here. A life settlement is an alternative to lapsing or surrendering. It's not an alternative to keeping the policy. If a person wants to keep his policy, that, there is no alternative to that. A life insurance settlement is going, if, a, if it's going to be terminated, you owe it to yourself to at least find out uh, what it's worth and, you know, be able to get get something for it. It has value. In other How words. much notice are people usually given when their policy is going to be terminated? Um, is this like a term policy? Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't figure that out. You can't say uh, it might be this, it might be that because each situation is different. They look at the life expectancy of the, uh, of the uh, policy holder and they look at the policy and they also look at the price of the premiums. That's a big factor that they look at. If they like it and the, and if there's a life, let's say the person is in their eighties and they have a brain tumor or some horrible disease, uh, they'll, they'll make an offer. And, um, rather than somebody who's healthy and strong and, you know, you can't determine that. And I, and, you know, some of the companies use a formula. I never use a formula because it never works out. We just sit back and wait and see what happens if the, the when the offer comes through. And here's the nice thing. The policyholder can accept it. They can counter the offer or they can reject it. I have a real interesting case history right here. This is interesting. Female, 91, with a $2 million Jackson National uh, Universal Life Policy and a life expectancy of 38 months. The insured had already tried to sell this policy about a year and a half prior. At that time, her life expectancy was 77 months and the highest offer they received was 250,000. Remember the the face amount is two million, 250,000. The family decided to keep the coverage and try to continue making the premium payments. 
Well, universal life policy payments go up and they're not constant uh, usually, uh, and, and, or they have, uh, they're fixed for a certain amount of time. But a year and a half later, the family determined that although their mother's health had deteriorated, they could no longer afford the payments and they needed money for their mother's care and back bills, as well as the payments. This time, the highest offer for the policy, listen to this year and a half later, came in at $795,000. What makes this case interesting is that in the interim, the insured's health had gotten much worse. And although it seemed to make even more sense to hold on to the coverage, it simply was unaffordable for the family to do so. The money was such a huge source of relief to the family to just get that money and be able to pay the bills. And I'm sure they went through their own finances to help out too. So that's, that's an interesting scenario. Each and every, every case has its own DNA to it, mm -hmm. has its own story to it. And so uh, it, I love the challenge and the, uh, that I get when I get a new customer to try to help them out and see how we can help them. And everyone has a different story to tell. It's kind of fun. It's not fun, but it, to me, it it's uh, exciting and it's a challenge uh, to be able to maybe make something positive happen for that, uh, for that senior. So the Let's companies who make these bids then hold on and continue to pay the premiums. And then when the person dies, they get the, the full amount. Is that how this works then? That's exactly how it works. Yeah. And um, the, we, the industry has quite a few, it's growing and the buyers, you know, when you think about it, um, it's a good, it's a good investment for them. They check it out every which way. I was told that when a, um, a life expectancy comes in from uh, the uh, actuaries. It's within six months of being right on target. They're pretty. At, they know how to. Do, they know how to do that. So let me talk about some of the benefits here. Life insurance uh, is a benefit benefit for not only the seniors, helping them out with trying to make ends meet, um, because. When you become a senior, aging changes everything. There are so many different things that happen to you and that you didn't have happen to you when you were younger. And so uh, a, a senior's life changes remarkably. Let's, let's say that. Cost of living increases. Um, all kinds of things happen. Health issues. And uh, uh, life insurance settlement is, is a really a wonderful thing for seniors who have a life insurance policy. And as we mentioned, term for term uh, policies, especially that have no cash value. It's especially a wonderful benefit for Alzheimer and Alzheimer's, I can never say that right, and dementia family members and loved ones, as you know. Uh, they go through such stress and the tension and the that you get from it is this could make a difference if there was no financial tension as well. It could help. Uh, you could bring in maybe uh, help to help you. I remember I had, I was suffering from anxiety from with my mother. And um, I had that once before. I, I recognized what it was. And my primary care said, it'll take about six months for it to go away. And she was absolutely right. After, even after my mother passed, I was still having this funny feeling in my throat and uh, it did just disappeared a few months later. So there is such a thing. It's from being so tense and, uh, and stressed out. There is also another uh, a group of people that benefit and it's business owners that are retiring from their business. They're now, let's say, 70 years old. They want to sell the business. Maybe they're leaving it to the families and to their children, their grandchildren. Many times they own what's called a key man policy for their business. It's a policy used, that's usually a term policy, okay? And we love key man policies. So we, we uh, love to do those too. And many of those um, 
uh, people that own those policies don't even know they have that. Oh, oh yeah, I think we have one of those policies. All right, you they that would greatly increase the net sale of their business if they could sell that policy. And I have a wonderful story I call in Key Man John that I'll be happy to send to you and to anybody who was, could be interested in that. Uh, it, it's just a great story. Um, so let me tell you who else who benefits from the life insurance settlement. The insurance company, they profit from a continuing revenue stream of premium payments from new buyers of old policies. So they also, instead of having somebody lapse your policy goodbye, they have a new buyer on a, from an old policy, keeping the revenue stream going. So that's good. And another benefactor of the uh, life insurance settlement are the seniors who work with, uh, senior advisors who work with seniors exclusively. They could be financial advisors. They could be senior care advisors, senior living advisors, placement advisors. They all work with seniors and the, and the senior industry is just booming right now. And it's going to continue to do so for 20, maybe 30 more years because of baby boomers. They also benefit when they help a senior find $50,000 from a old file in their drawer. They're happy. They're going to tell their friends and other people and they're going to get referred. Here's Here's uh, Joyce, Joyce's card, give her a call, she'll help you out. Something like that. It's a great, it's a great way to get referral business. And word of mouth referrals are the best kind of referrals you can get. Better than any other because happy customers bring uh, happy referrals. And that's it. I'm trying to think of what I forgot to tell you here. I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> and um, okay, let's talk about taxes on this. I remember you mentioned taxes to me one time. Yes, taxes. Back in 2017, there was a new tax law that went into effect called the Tax Cut Job Act. And when that went into effect, it was a wonderful boom for the life insurance settlement business because what uh, policyholders were or sellers of life insurance policies had to pay prior to that date was a lot more than they pay now. Uh, I have a wonderful piece here that gives you an example, step-by-step, -step, everything you need to know. And I'm willing to send that email that out to anybody who is interested. It's basic, it cut back the tax liability from the prior tax law by two thirds. I'm gonna give you just a quick example. There was a $2 million, let's see, what was it? the, uh, oh, person received $460,000 proceeds, okay? His, he only paid $32,000 on that proceed for taxes, which is a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Prior to the Tax Cut Job Act, he would have paid $97,000 on for taxes. So it's, it's really been good for a life insurance settlement. Now, the people who don't pay taxes are viaticals. They are tax exempt. Also, who don't pay taxes are people who are, who have, who have a need for assisted living, whether it be an assisted living living facility, or you have somebody come to the house and help you with the assisted living. Uh, some people, some seniors, when they're very old, they can't dress themselves, they can't do toiletry themselves, they can't feed themselves, they can't do many things, and that can be documented, and that could that could could probably exempt them from paying taxes on their life insurance settlement. So that's a wonderful thing as well. And, and, and that's it. You know, I have a, a great uh, piece of information. I always tell people I'm not a tax person or a, a law. A, I don't give out any legal advice either, but I have information where you can go and get it. Another thing that we do, that I do personally, when anybody uh, calls, calls me and they decide they're going to do a life insurance settlement, I send them a living will that's 
that is uh, appropriate for the state they're living in because each state has its own rules and regulations regarding wills and all kinds of stipulations. And uh, so in other words, in, you're in Minnesota, the rules and regulations there are different from those in New Mexico. And so I send each one um, a copy of what uh, pertains to them. And if they want to proceed with that and register with the American Living Will Registry, they could do so, but they don't need to. They have a copy of the Living Will. They fill it out. They have a, usually all they need is a, um, some states require um, a, uh, I'm trying to think, a rotary, notary, notary. But uh, some states don't. And in New Mexico, all you need to do is have a, a signature of um, a, um, a witness, a witness signature signed that you signed. And it's, it's really nice. Basically, it's advanced directives, but much more lengthy than just a one or two page advanced directive that you get in the hospital. It entails a lot more who you want to take care of certain things. It's, it's almost like a, a will. It's a living will. So I do send that out to anyone who is interested and um, if they decide to go with a life insurance settlement. Something else about a life insurance settlement too is they don't have to sell the whole policy. They could sell half a, and, and hold back half for final expenses. And so there's a lot of different ways to, as they say, make it work for them. And uh, we do that all the time. The uh, the one thing I know you ha you have a blog, and I would I do I do I, I have I just started that in December, and I only have four blogs up. But every month is, there's going to be another blog, and I would recommend uh, folks to go to the blog page and read the blog because there's a lot of information that I just told you are, are probably uh, more detailed on the blog, and uh, you can go there and check out the history is one of them. I have one called settle for more. In other words, don't settle for less by letting your policy lapse or surrendering it. Settle for more. <laughs> this, it's like a no brainer. I sometimes say, wish I had a life insurance policy. I always said, if I had a lot of money, I would be buying life insurance policies because it sounds like a, an interesting business. But um, what else is up there? Okay. Uh, who benefits? And each month I'm going to have something new come up uh, that I will um, put on my blog, my monthly blog. Okay. I also have a video on the life settlement page. If you go to the life settlement page on the website, just scroll down a little bit and it'll say, uh, look at a three minute video. It's very short, but it's fun and it's entertaining. It's all animated. And so I offer that as well. And that's great for seniors and for family members to watch because they'll not understand what, what, what many times what this is. So it spells it out there. And um, my telephone number is there everywhere. And my you can reach my website by just taking my name, JoyceBidwell.com or go to BidwellLifeSettlements.com. Same thing, it takes you to the same place. And... Um, my email address is Joyce at BidwellLifeSettlements.com. That's the best one to go to. And um, I will be happy to email you anything you would like to know and, and personally visit with you. And many times what I hear family members tell me is they they just want somebody to hold their hand or uh, you know their mother's hand or their whoever it is. And that's what I do. I do a lot of hand holding and and talking about old times and try to make some friends and uh, remember when it was the 50s, the 1950s when I grew up, everybody at my, my age bracket remembers the good old years. <laughs> so um, that's basically it. I enjoy doing this. I've been in financial services since the 80s. I started with mortgages and had my own mortgage company. I enjoyed that. Lived in Colorado at the time. It was fun. And then I got into life, uh, into uh, equipment leasing. Oh, that was a lot of fun too. I enjoyed that. And then I just started to think about doing uh, life insurance, maybe final expense. But I, what happened with me is when my mother passed, I went to the funeral home and they said uh, to join them and I did. And then I eventually weaned myself off into final expense and then final expense 
uh, I got to visit all the senior centers in the area and I loved it so much. And then one day when I was driving around in the car, I heard an ad for life insurance settlement. And I says, I like that one. So I called them and I, I, that's it. I, I was done. I was sold and I've been doing this now for about six years. And I try real hard <laughs> to, to help people out. So that's it. That's my story in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, I'm always available to talk to. Okay. One thing I was thinking, you know, when, when people can cash out, they can use the money however they want, where right. a lot of people have bought, you know, um, long-term long insurance. And sometimes there's limitations because of verbiage in the policy of how they can use the funding and stuff. And I've, I've had people do a battle, but I, but I suppose, you know, the, the laws can always change in terms of how, how you can use things over time too. So, yeah. But, uh, but I can see how this could be. Uh, yeah. The uh, life settlement is a clean deal. No stipulations, no rules. And reg once it's done, you have the money in your account. You can, a lot of people do it for travel. They just want to travel the world, but uh, you know, it, there's nobody telling you what to use the money for. Yeah. Um and with a reverse mortgage, there are stipulations um, that need to be checked out. You have to live in the property for so many years. Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, of, of the, the, the reverse mortgage, but I know there are stipulations to it with that, um, but not with life insurance settlements. On, on the blog, Settle for More, it explains how. I use an example there. Um, when people, when, when, Seniors reach about 75, 76. They start to think about downsizing. We've accumulated all these things. We want to get rid of it now. And I use an example. It's my own example too. Uh, many times they have an old car, antique car in the garage they can't depart with. They love it. They bought it when they were young and they just can't get rid of it. And uh, instead of, you know, and it has value. And so they uh, put an ad in the paper and couple of people call and answer the ad. They make an offer. One of them comes out. He says, I will offer you X amount of dollars, takes it for a ride. He likes it. And that was the best best offer. And the uh, seller says, yeah, okay. Uh, come back tomorrow with a certified check or a cashier's check. I'll give you the keys, the title, and the car. And that's exactly how a life insurance settlement works. And I use that example in uh, this one particular blog, it's whether it's a an old car or whether it's a policy that's in your drawer, it all equals cash. There's no, there are no, there are no hooks there, and um, so uh, it's clean. And it's uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting business. I get to hear a lot of different stories and um, make a lot of friends too. Well, good. Well, yeah. this has been, a, you know, a really interesting conversation. I think it's always important for people to know their options. And this is another option for, for people to consider and, yes. and things. So in wrapping up, I just want to, again, thank you, Joyce. Uh, Joyce is with BidwellLifeSettlements.com. You can also reach out to her via email at Joyce at BidwellLifeSettlements.com. She's also on LinkedIn. And um, she's also a member of Dementia Map with us. Yep. And is it okay to give out your phone number here? Uh, no, please give my phone number out. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I don't hold back anything. <laughs> okay, so that is 505-702-3699. That's 505-702-3699. Three six nine nine. So very easy to get a hold of, easy to talk to. Um, mm -hmm. As you can see from our conversation here today, uh, she would love to be able to help you out and investigate your personal situation. So don't hesitate to uh, to call or email or um, you know find her on uh, on uh, LinkedIn or Dementia Map as well. So thank you, Joyce. Appreciate your time today. You're welcome, Laura, and thank you so much for having me. I, I always enjoy talking to you, and it was a pleasure to be able to tell your audience what I do. Thank right. you so much. Thank you.
And for our listeners, I always ask you to be a giver of hope, like, click, and share. Not because I, I track the numbers, but because that's a way to get this information out to a broader audience. And there's a lot of people probably in your own sphere that don't know this information. I didn't know it was available until I... And so help spread the word that, again, it's just one more option. You know, financial um, issues are tough. They're stressful, uh, not just the, the senior but their family and friends as well. And this oh, yes. could possibly be one more option to be able to assist them in living a comfortable, dignified life. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. It's time to rethink, renew, and reimagine retirement. Hey, everybody. Jared Sebesta here, host of Retire Repurposed. Now, this podcast is about the non-financial parts of retirement, which many times can be even more challenging than the financial. We believe retirement is not the end, rather the beginning of what could be the most impactful, purposeful, and fulfilling season of a person's life. So don't retire. Become repurposed. To listen now, search Retire Repurposed on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.